Hi, I'm Dave Fennell, the editor of Imaging Technology News Magazine. I'm here at RSNA 2015, and I have with me John Brubaker. He is an MBA and a registered cardiovascular technologist and an ultrasound technology analyst with MD Byline. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the ultrasound technologies that you're seeing on the floor and what you're seeing in terms of trends. Yes, well, I think what I've seen at this RSNA the last couple days has been the uh, continuation of what I've seen for the last several years. Um, companies are really addressing the needs of the market. They're taking um, great attention to what the customers and the buyers are asking for and looking for. And so what we're seeing is a huge concentration at the premium and level, and uh, as would be expected. And what we're seeing there is the continued um, improvement in um, image quality, productivity, ergonomics, and all those things that the customers need to um, uh, do uh, quality work, uh, diagnostic work, and at a rapid pace. And then what we're also seeing is a broadening of the market, which has been going on for years, but it continues to be um, happening, where customers know that um, um, economics is playing a big part in today's market. So hospitals can't always buy the premium system, nor every facility does not need the premium system. I've seen a proliferation of a lot of mid-range systems. Yes, exactly. And um, the customers that are doing well have a broad product line. So they can go to the customer and say, you know, you may want to mix this product with this product. And that provides um, cost savings, but um, quality uh, products that uh, can be utilized um, as needed. So. Um, Approaching those market segments is something that uh, um, we've continued to see, and this is happening uh, with just about every vendor. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, point of care market is huge, as it has been and continues to be. Um, we're seeing that kind of broaden as well from uh, the last couple of years. The uh, touch systems, the tablet systems were um, really um, prolific and uh, excited the customers because that's approaching the market of non-sonographers. Mm -hmm. And so this is something they're familiar with, uh, comes with touch screen so they can easily uh, um, get the images and don't have to spend a lot of time um, getting the, the uh, end product that, the, that they need. And then what we're also seeing is uh, not new, but something that as finally getting to a point of um, acceptability is the, the hand-carried ultrasound system, mm -hmm. primarily at the uh, bedside, mm -hmm. um, primarily for physici physician use, but also for um, um, first responders, um, nurses, anybody um, at, the, uh, uh, at the bedside. And the, you know, something we're seeing is in the new term terminology is the apps ultrasound, and Philips has, uh, is showing their Lumify, which is um, exactly that, but it's a different concept. It's a rental of a transducer, mm -hmm. and then you um, get the app and the uh, uh, smart device. I saw it yesterday. It's, it's just, uh, it works off of Android platforms. Uh, yes and uh, everything's contained within the transducer itself. Yes. You can, uh, I think they said their payment model's about uh, so roughly 200 bucks a month right. to rent the transducer, but the app is free Which, and uh, tutorials on the app. Exactly, and that makes a lot of sense to do that rental uh, philosophy. So we'll see how, how, um, how that's accepted. And, and that's gonna be a competition with uh, GE's V-Scan. Definitely, uh, definitely, GE, has been out a while. It, it has been, they came out with a, a dual probe system last mm -hmm. year and uh, when I spoke to them the other day, they said there are about uh, just over 15,000 yes. that they sold. Yes, um, I know with MD Byline, we uh, review a lot of quotations on that product, so it mm -hmm. is very popular. And the uh, Philips um, transduce they offer two transducers as well, so mm -hmm. that was pretty um, wise to approach it with um, a linear and a phase array transducer. And then I also went by the Sonosite booth, and they were introducing their um, hand-carried mm -hmm. system. Uh, their approach, and, and this is how they're marketing it, is it's not, uh, it's not just a smart device, it's a medical device. Yes. And that's typical for Sonos, because they want to emphasize their durability. Right. And uh, it, it's, it's designed, uh, you know, it's got a handhold um, part of the... With the rubber bumper the, around yeah, it. Really, it's really, uh, very ergonomic. Very, very ergonomic. And, uh, they said it was Bluetooth enabled, so their hope is uh, going to HIMSS, uh, which will be coming up in a couple months. There's a proliferation of Bluetooth enabled uh, devices that you can plug into your smartphones and that. Everything from checking uh, uh, blood pressure, pulse oximeters to temperature, yes. uh, or even uh, measuring uh, blood sugar levels. Right. And 
I think their goal is eventually to get to the point to where they could have all these peripheral plugins so they could actually make it a one-stop shop diagnostic Yeah, device. exactly. And that, that's addressing the need in remote rural areas as well. So um, um, it's, it's pretty exciting. And these devices also allow the transfer of the images and the data. So, and mm -hmm. as, you know, as you as you mentioned, so um, it's really going to be interesting to see how uh, we know it's going to be popular mm -hmm. and and adapt well. But uh, we'll see how to what extent it is um, part of the uh, the market. With the premium systems, uh, GE launched this uh, E95 earlier this year, yes. uh, primarily aimed at the cardiovascular right. market, and right. it will become their primary uh, flagship for cardiovascular imaging. Right. Um, the image quality on that, when I was able to see it uh, at ASC earlier this yes. year, was uh, outstanding. I mean, even from a vendor neutral standpoint, right. where some of the images uh, almost uh, look CT quality, where you can start picking out structures that you've never been able to see on an ultrasound before. Yeah, exactly. And that's, um, um, I had the same opinion when I saw that. And I've spoken to a lot of customers that have. Uh, they're not GE customers. Mm -hmm. They're long-term customers with uh, um, Philips or, or Siemens, and um, it's hard to have them break away when they've got a, a relationship with a, a vendor. But many of them have mentioned they've seen this, they've heard of this, and they want to, to see it. And um, so that's going to be interesting. GE does very well in the cardiac market, mm -hmm. and um, the image quality is um, it's pretty impressive. They had uh, examples from their uh, beta sites where they even had uh, blood clot formation on the uh, mitral valve and things that were just really impressive to see firsthand. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the Epic system that's come out with uh, Philips Healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, they are going down the road of uh, anatomical intelligence and machine learning and trying to uh, get inner operator variability cut down uh, by having the machine actually pick out the angles on uh, 3D data sets. Right, exactly. W w where do you see that technology going? Uh, no, I think that's going to be um, really significant and important to um, uh, to the acceptance of it because it's got to be able to um, uh, process quickly and accurately and consistently. And uh, otherwise, you know, it's going to uh, involve uh, a, a lot of time and um, specific any, any effort on the part of the, the people involved, um, it's going to be hard for, uh, for acceptance. But, um, but with that, um, that tool, it's, it's, I think it's going to be uh, pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Toshiba, uh, I was at their booth mm -hmm. the other day, and uh, with their Aplio 300 and 500 series, their premium line, uh, they have uh, vascular imaging that they've been able to uh, image slow flow. The slow flow, yes. Within organs uh, for organ perfusion, and uh, this year they're introducing that technology where they could actually do 3D volume sets so they could rotate the uh, models of the vasculature yes. around. I, I do. I, I went by the Toshiba booth and, and saw that image, and that mm -hmm. was pretty impressive, and that is going to be huge for the surgeon. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really going to be uh, uh, significant as well. So. Do you think that might be able to cut down on some of the uh, post-operative CTs? And it, it should, and that, uh, I expect that it uh, certainly will. And um, that is exactly where we're seeing um, ultrasound move. Mm -hmm. um, you know, saving time, saving money, quicker diagnosis, it's all works for the patient care, but also a reduction in um, CT, MRI, in, in some instances. So that's going to continue to, um, to move in that direction. Helps healthcare. Right. Yeah. Last thing I wanted to mention was uh, the proliferation of 3D ultrasound. Uh, there's a lot of resistance to it. Uh, why do I need 3D when I 2D I've been diagnosing for 15, 20 years off of? Uh, do you see any traction with 3D, and do you really see this as kind of the standard of care moving forward? Yeah, we, we do. It has been slow going, um, mm -hmm. slower than I anticipated, but um, I've been in ultrasound for many years, and when some significant technology comes along, it is often um, takes time for acceptance because exactly as you mentioned, I, I'm perfectly happy with this, this technology. Why should I move to that? It takes more time. I have to learn how to do it, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we are reaching that stage where it is going to be the standard of care. Uh, we, we see that more and more uh, with the quotations that we review. We see 3D uh, becoming part of the, the standard. So, of course, it's going to depend on the hospital mm -hmm. um, and the money, but um, busy ultrasound practices, I think we're going to be see that uh, standard. When CD, uh, CT technology, MRI technology, advanced visualization was first pushed out uh, maybe in the last decade, uh, there is also some resistance to going to 3D imaging with uh, in looking at data sets of three-dimensional reconstructions because right. it took forever to reconstruct. Yeah, exactly. Once they started automating this through Terra Recon Vital Images and other vendors that are out yeah. there, uh, it presses the buttons and all of a sudden you had automated bone removal and things like that. You can go right to the coronaries. Exactly. 
uh, the uptake was rapid, and I, I think we're starting to see that as well with uh, 3D ultrasound. Yes, I definitely, definitely. With the variability with your various operators, uh, do you think that the 3D data set is really the solution to maybe overcoming uh, some of the variability that you're Yes, seeing? exactly. I think that was one of the, uh, um, certainly one of the significant um, um, things to overcome mm -hmm. because you're often when you're using 3D you need to um, do it on repeated instances and mm -hmm. cases and if you're not getting the exact um, location the exact um, image um, it could affect the, uh, the, the what you're seeing what you're ending up in your diagnosis so um, yeah I think that is, is really significant going to uh, go a long way. Just like when you capture a CT or an MR data set, I mean, you could always slice and dice right. on the exact axis and plane that you want to get the exact image that you want. And it seems to me that that's, once you capture that data set in Echo, you could do the same thing to where uh, even if you don't have the best tech in the world, you, could still, you still have the data. Precisely. And that's key. That is going to be an important factor. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.